Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> this podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Welcome to episode 105 of The Horror of Babylon, where we discuss BR2! I'm sorry, Battle Royale 2 Requiem. I am Ryan, and with me as always is Daniel. Say hi, Daniel. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Is that racist? <laughs> no, because that's no. exactly how he says it. It's exactly how well, we're just mimicking what he says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and thank you to our patrons. I have to say that the, there are two groups of people in life. There are winners and there are losers, and our patrons are patrons are definitely winners. Thank you to Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons. Daniel's making a face because he thought I was about to call them losers, but they are not. They are absolutely winners. <laughs> I, I just I have something for this, but we have to get through them first. And Logan, the, the Full, full metal, metal Patron, and Ben, ben the, the Fourth, Patron, patron of, of Hope, and Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain, yo. Oh, she makes it rain and excuse me thank you to four horsemen comics and gaming which you can visit at the morgantown mall in morgantown west virginia the mall at robertson in pittsburgh pennsylvania and you can shop online at shop.forestmancomics.com and if you make it in say hello to ronald the third grandpa's of christmas who we made a lot of jokes about him being the the original teacher from all the battle royale stuff but he 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 rubs me more of like the teacher from battle royale too yeah kind of yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, if all of our patrons were in a battle royale, who would you put your money on? Uh, Abby or Mia. I would um, also put my money on Abby or Mia. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, no offense to the guys, but I mean, if I were included in that, I would also <laughs> lose to one of them. So, no shade. No shade. Uh, trigger warning, death of children, violence and children, gun violence, and, you know, all the stuff. Disappointing sequels. Yeah. Um, es especially if you're, like, an actual fan of Battle Royale. I can't imagine this being, like, the follow-up you got. Yeah. Um, for me, this is not a good movie. Um, but... I managed to have fun with it. I think there's some real entertainment value. Yes, but it is not good. <laughs> yeah, it's not like what... It It doesn't feel like it's attempting to be cinema. No. Okay, so let's start with our history with Battle Royale 2. I saw... This is my second time watching it. I saw it one time like 10 or 12 years ago right after I watched the original. Yeah, same. So. And... I, I think I liked it more this time because the first time I was just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And this time I knew that I knew what it was. <laughs> Ow. I knew what it was and just kind of went in. Just, just kind of roll with it. Yeah. And, and I had fun. Uh, I sat down and I kind of made a day of it. I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to watch this uh, today and sit and enjoy it. Have some snacks. I like snacks. Yeah. I do like snacks. The vampires are pure myth. Superstition. I may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today. Background, uh, this film was released May 18th, 2003. Of course, it is the sequel to the Battle Royale film from 2000, which is an adaptation of Kashun Takami's novel of the same name. 
It was directed by Kenji Fuku, uh, Fukasaku, who directed the original in its very long and storied career of Japanese cinema. Unfortunately, he died of prostate cancer on January 12th of that year. Oof. And at that time, he had only shot one scene uh, with Kitano, so the, yeah. the villain from the original. So his son, Kenta Fukasaku, who wrote both screenplays and was the second unit director on the first movie, took over with, and became the full director of the second movie. You know what's weird here is like all the ingredients for a good sequel seem to exist here. I like a lot of the things about this movie on paper. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little more in structure and themes. Uh, this was a critical failure in Japan and abroad. It had a budget of $9 million and took in 14.9. I, so not, not a big success, but not like not like it made half its budget back either so yeah i've seen worse i've seen worse uh there is if you really enjoy this movie and you want more there's a novelization of the film written by mccoy suki and there's also a 20 minute extended edition which unfortunately is what i watched is, is that what i because we watched on the same thing yeah. so yeah yeah it's uh i i feel like the 20 minutes probably makes it strictly worse than the theatrical cut. What if it's just more shots of the teacher? I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I want it to be. Though. Yeah, that would be fine. <laughs> that would be. That would actually just be fine. I'd rather just have a variety show with him as the host. And that's that. Another story in the classic, infallible three-act structure. Good enough for Aristotle. Good enough for The Simpsons. Mr. Sislak, I have a feeling there's going to be one more act to this story. Well, I'm not hanging around for that. Four acts. Okay, structure and themes. Uh, the wiki calls this a dystopian action movie. So not even using the term horror in the description of this film. What do you? Th what are your thoughts on this, like genre-wise? I think that fits more. It's played a lot more like an action movie too than. It has a lot of war movie elements. Yeah. Um. Not and not action like. Rambo. Not like Rambo, but... But like, like uh, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, like that kind of movie. Yeah. Um, it, including, you know, the whole, like, storming, <laughs> storming a, beach. a beach. Yeah. Uh, that scene actually really struck me, um, like, Iwo Jima. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it has, like, the black sand beach, and obviously it's Japan, and... Uh, speaking of Japan, so it's Japan. It's not the Greater Republic of East Asia, <laughs> which they don't say once throughout the entire movie. The Republic broke up in between movies because of Wild Seven. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's my head cannon. Okay, so what are your thoughts? So the biggest theme, uh, fascism, the totalitarian government, that ca carries over from the first movie. But if to me. It feels like it's less about the government being bad and it's more about a generational conflict between the people. Yeah. Because aside from the program itself, they don't really talk a lot about atrocities that the government does. Yeah, it, they almost explicitly are just talking about kids these days. Yeah. It just seems like there's a bunch of bad kids. And they call the country Japan and they speak with the Prime Minister of Japan, it just kind of seems like it's Japan. I love that scene when the teacher throws rocks at the big screen and mm -hmm. flinch it. Like, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> he's on camera. I love when they start that call and the Prime Minister is there undressed and he's like, oh, this is pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> Maybe someone should order a pizza. <laughs> um, terrorism. Yeah. Uh, and, and I feel like some ambiguous morality regarding terrorism. This movie, this is oddly topical, and I'm not going to talk a lot about yeah, it. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was thinking a lot about that. But I will say that this movie is almost an apology letter for, let, let's call them opposition fighters. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to get into that though, but that's that's how the movie feels like it's shot and reads. I will just say that the first thing you find out is that Shuya has started a terrorist group 
and they blow up like seven buildings full of people. Yeah. And you find out that it wasn't just like strictly government people in there. There were families, children died. Like it's like people died. Like a lot of the kids in this movie lost their parents in those attacks. And ah. then Shuya is the hero. Shuya and his his ragtag group also shoot a bunch of kids. They do. Now, you could apologize for it and go, they were at a distance. Like, did they know they were? No, they didn't because okay. there's that scene like, a necklace, necklace, they're wearing a necklace. Okay, that's right. And if you think about it, they dress them in fatigues. They yeah. had helmets on. And, and send them in there. Yeah. That also makes it super hard to keep track of who any of these kids are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's really only like three or four like named characters that really matter. And there were a couple that they tried to give like wild hairdos so that they stood out. That one kid had like a lion's mane. <laughs> yeah. And it was crazy. <laughs> and the poor. Oh, she would have lasted longer. That poor blonde girl who was the first one to die. <laughs> yeah. The teacher's such an asshole. It's like, oh, by the way, you guys are paired, and if one of you dies, the other one dies. What? <laughs> Did I forget to mention that? Um, that's one of th I really like that on paper. Yeah. I think that's an interesting twist on the original program. I, I have a similar idea for the homework question. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Cool. Um, but I'm a sick bastard, so I had fun with it. <laughs> so, as I was writing these notes, and as I was watching the movie, I was kind of... I, I am totally, absolutely cool with the United States of America being posed as a villain in foreign media and in domestic media. It doesn't bother me at all. What I thought was a little bit strange is that like every other piece of Battle Royale media is like America's the Golden Land. That's where you want to go when you escape the Republic of Greater East Asia. That's you want to go to the land of freedom. But here it's like all of a sudden America's like the Nazis. <laughs> I don't have a lot to say on it. It, it. it only bothers me in certain contexts. In other contexts, it doesn't bother me at all. It only bothers me in terms of continuity. Yeah. Um, like, it'd probably bother me more if this movie wasn't made in 2003. Because I also thought, about, I'm like, that's like, that's war in Ir Afghanistan and, nonsense. And Iraq. And Iraq, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, yeah, that's like the prime time they made movies like that. And that's fine. I'm okay with all that. But just, it's like a continuity issue. Yeah, that that's my only problem. Yeah. Actually, I wish with these, this happens with Japanese media all the time where America's the bad guys, but they, they don't say it by name or they say like Nation X or mm -hmm. that country. And I wish like they nobody that cares. Manga so much, Nation just, X. Yeah, just <laughs> say America. Just say the United States. Like nobody cares. I we, would appreciate it more. Yeah. They're coming to get you, Barbara characters. I do not remember a lot of these people's names. Uh, so I could remember two of them without... The, the, so the only two that I, I remember of the new characters are Shiori, who's Kitano's daughter, and yeah. Taku. We, oh, we will yeah. talk about Taku. Blonde boy? Yeah. Okay. But I also have the other like main girl now. I have her written down and then the teacher, but yeah. all the rest of them are just... But we'll start with Shuya. I hated everything that came out of his mouth. I also hate... He, he sounded... He sounded like a Twitter-tier political pundit. Mm -hmm. uh, you get it from conservatives, you get it from liberals, where people think they have like some sort of deep understanding of geopolitics and they'll mm -hmm. ramble nonsense. And I'm just sitting there going, okay, buddy, like... Kid, you're like 17. <laughs> yeah. Settled down. I mean, like, obviously, you've gone through a lot more than a typical 17-year-old. Yeah, but he sounds just like these people who are also 17 and haven't gone through shit. I feel like the things he says just literally don't make sense. Like, the speech he gives on TV, like, I didn't understand, like, <laughs> what he was trying to say. And then, like, the last scene of the movie where they're driving off in the distance he's like now we've learned that the world is at our back i'm like no the world is not at your back it, it, the americans threw a missile at you it's pseudo intellectual nonsense yeah it's it just made no sense and i don't think shia was ever the strongest character from the novel or the last movie or the manga no but i think he's better than what this was yeah he's <laughs> He's better, and this is the worst Shuya by a lot. And that includes manga Shuya that had, Which, like, a five-page... I don't know if I should shoot the dude who's literally shooting at I me. I know that this Shuya 
is not the same as Manga Shuya, but I just spent two weeks reading that whole manga. So that's the version of him that's most fresh in my mind. Yeah. And I'm like, and as I'm watching this movie, I'm like, okay, so you can't shoot the sociopath, but you can blow up seven buildings full of people. I also, even though I think that's the weakest part and that made one of the weakest parts in that manga, mm -hmm. I also think it's stronger character wise than this, which is like, yeah. Like, I can't describe it as anything else other than pseudo-intellectualism. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of nonsense drives me crazy. I just, it just didn't make sense to me. Like, I didn't understand what they were going for. I'm um, like, buddy, you're supposed to be playing on a street corner in America. <laughs> yeah, did they even, like, did they, in the first movie, did they actually say that they were going to America? Or am I just getting, like, the book and the manga mixed up with the... Uh, they mention it, but I don't know if they... They never showed them actually getting there. In the yeah. book, they don't show them getting there either. Well, the last scene in the movie is him and Noriko in disguise walking yeah. down the street. But uh, they, they do mention that that's where he wants to go. But instead, they go to Afghanistan. <laughs> that's where he got radicalized. <laughs> by Shinji's uncle <laughs> of all people. Yeah. The third man is dead, but his uncle still shows up in the second movie. <sighs> all right. We'll get to that. Yeah, Shinji. Eh. Okay. Uh, okay. Our protagonist of sort, or one of our two protagonists, uh, Shiori Kitano, Kitano's daughter, played by Ai Maeda. I think this was the best idea done poorly. <laughs> I, yes and no, but I think they did a bad job explaining why she would volunteer to be in the program. Yeah, she, I, it's I want to know my father. I like the idea because even in the book he mentions he had children. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of one of his kids trying to figure out like what happened or something like that, or going in, or even just getting put in the program. I think. They need to do explain it better for me because yeah. it's tantamount to committing suicide. Yeah, uh, and that's the issue. Is like it had a good idea but didn't explore it. Mm -hmm. uh, she should have just been the focus instead of facial expressions, McGee. Yes, <laughs> um, I also was like confused. I she doesn't tell. Shuya that she's Kitano's daughter until the very end of the movie so much so that I thought I missed it mm -hmm. I was like surely she told him already like did, was I not paying attention did I miss the subtitle no was, it was like right at the end yeah and then I was like and then she dies <laughs> yeah and I was kind of sad <laughs> yeah it's like shit uh, on the plus side uh, six kids survived this one instead of two yeah yeah well I guess Shuya also so seven but which is nice. But yeah, I like... She's another thing that I like on paper. Um, and I also just... I like how she acted, like, in their assault on the Wild 7 base when her partner is like, I'm going to run over there and check on those guys. And she, like, hits him in the face with the butt of her rifle. Mm -hmm. And she says, no, you're not. <laughs> that was great. Yes. Um, I really liked her. Uh, so our other protagonist... Takuma Aoi, played by Shug Shugo Oshinari. They just call him Taku. He has, you know, he's a delinquent because he has bleached blonde hair. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that's how you know these kids are delinquents because they have long hair and they wear leather jackets and they have piercings. They and, have that Kuwabara hairstyle. Yeah, the pompadour. <laughs> I love that. I wish yeah. I could have one of those. The teacher has one of those. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to him. This kid, I have never ever seen anyone make facial expressions the way that this kid makes facial expressions. Not even Kramer? No. Yeah. Kramer can't make his eyes, like, pop out of his head yeah. the way that this kid does. He... That's about the only thing I could say about him, too. Well, and he also just, like, has no story. Like, he's just there along for the ride, and he's just screaming and screaming and screaming, and then he finally gets to escape, and they're going down the mine shaft back to the mainland, and he stops and he goes, and he's like, I have to go back. I have to find my answer. Your answer to what? You've had no story. There's no question. Like, what's going on? And it's just like this big dramatic scene where the, the two other guys decide that they're going to go with him and it's that like we know we're not coming back but we're going anyway and I'm like you guys are 14 you're going to die this is like, stupid like why would you do this yeah this is stupid 
I, uh... You're away scot-free. Shuya's a terrorist. Let him die. I would have... I felt like every ounce of time we spent with him was wasted time that we could have been spending with the girl, uh, Shiori. Yeah, because she at least has a a story. Like a backstory that we could have been exploring instead of this kid. And she's the... Uh, okay, we do get one flashback where his mom drops him off at school. Yeah. He's a delinquent, and his mom doesn't care. That's his backstory. But that's it. And none of the other of the forty two kids, we get that one scene with Taku and his mom, and then Shiori's story, and that's it. I like that. Uh, Shiori's entire motivation seems to be her father's weird ass painting of some high schooler he was macking on. Yeah. <laughs> When I realized it wasn't me, I was upset. <laughs> was Noriko a nice girl? She's the nicest. I'm sorry. It's like, Shuya, maybe you should have said she was a bitch. <laughs> like, brother, like, read the room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, and then the only, aside from the teacher, the only other character I've written down, maybe I shouldn't have even bothered, is now, who is the, the other girl, the long-haired girl, the one who doesn't die. Yeah. Like, who's like clinging to Taku and like I don't know like I don't have a lot to say about it. she gets to live yeah she gets her and three other girls whose name I can't remember get to live yeah and they save a baby and a bunch of kids and I remember Jen Jen is the little guy who uh was sh- that the kid with glasses no, no Shuya gives him his AK okay that kid yeah I re- his name is uh, the l- the, the like the little kid. Yeah, the little kid. Yeah. So there's the the guy with glasses, like the he he. I ima- I don't I don't think it ever says if he's the class rep, but I imagine he's like the class rep he's character. Something like that. Yeah. He, he wears the helmet. Yeah. I actually think it's totally hilarious. Like everything he does in the last part of the movie. Kyoko, I have always loved you. So go, <laughs> go die. <laughs> he's like, there's a problem solved. <laughs> So just go die. And then he has, he he runs out of there. They, they run into the fortress and they start shooting. And he immediately has a dead body fall on him. And he's just like on the ground flailing because there's a dead soldier on him. And he can't get up. And then like half a second later, he and one of the other guys are going back to back with a bazooka. Just trouncing all these soldiers. And it's like. Did you guys make storyboards? Did you have a plan? <laughs> or did you just go to an island with a bunch of guns and say, go at it? We can piece it together in editing. <laughs> it, it will be fine. <laughs> it was it was entertaining. Like, I... I, there, I, I feel like this is... We keep talking about, like, party and beer movies. This is another one that I feel like you could have a good time with. Yeah, I, I would watch this movie again. I wouldn't necessarily watch this movie every time I watched Battle Royale. There, I can even imagine circumstances where I'd watch this instead of Battle Royale. Like if I was doing like a bad Japanese cinema night or something. Yeah. Or like something like a goofy night. If I wanted to watch things like uh, Ichi the Killer, which is an actually good movie, but it's very similar in tone to this. Um, I've only seen one scene. I saw the scene with the piano wire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about the star of this movie, uh, Riki Takeuchi, who they just let his character be his name. He plays Riki Takeuchi. That way I will not be confused. <laughs> they have tri- they, they did the novel, the movie, the manga, and they've tried to get the villain right three times and failed, and they finally got it on the fourth try. Perfect. I, ten out of ten. I fucking love the scene where he's just, like, eating pills. <laughs> As that Monago, I really feel like they just gave him a bunch of prop. I don't know this guy's like this actor's history. Oh, he has like 200 credits on IMDb. He's like a big deal. I, I, but I have a head cannon for him, and I don't want to like break the illusion that he's like the carrot top of Japan. He's a prop comic, <laughs> and they just gave him a bunch of shit and said, "Go." Okay, so I'm gonna explain this. <laughs> The, you're gonna love this. So I went through his whole IMDb. Yeah. I had only seen one other thing he was in. Okay. It was an anime that he obviously did a voice in, and I was like, "That's the exact anime that I would expect him to have been in." Okay. I'm gonna give you three guesses. I have no idea. Uh, a fully coolie? No, but you're you're sort of in the ballpark. Uh. Sort sort like a broad ballpark. <sighs> 
Is it something I've seen? Um, yes. Is it yes, it is absolutely something you have seen. You love it. I love it? You love it. <sighs> well, now I'm trying to think of, like, goofy-ass shit that I've seen. It is definitely goofy. <laughs> I've also seen it. I also love it. Not as much as you, but I, I do like it a lot. I have no clue. He was in Detroit Metal City. There's no fucking way. <laughs> he absolutely was. Who's he in Detroit I, Metal City? I Googled it. I didn't recognize. He's one of the guys in the band. So let me just IMDB Ricky talk. Have you seen the Detroit Metal City live action movie? No. It's the best version. Really? It's the best version of that story. That's that's hard to imagine. It's like they took a bunch of the random nonsense and turned it into a cohesive narrative. I don't want that. I don't want random nonsense. Okay, he's Jack Ill Dark, which is... <sighs> it's not Krauser. <laughs> no, he's not the main character. <laughs> which I wouldn't have been surprised by after you told me that. He's raping the Eiffel Tower. The Tokyo Tower. Yeah. He's this guy. Oh, he's the fanboy. That's the, the their big the, their biggest fan. They go to all of their concerts. I haven't seen it since college, but uh, I decided that starting next year, after I get through the holidays, I'm gonna finish collecting the manga before like it gets out of my price range. Yeah, that's smart. Because right now they're still like twenty bucks a piece, and they're like very short mangas. Mm -hmm. It's doable. And I got like five more to go. The first time I laughed when watching this movie was uh, when he comes in and throws the rugby ball and yells Merry Christmas. It's, <laughs> it's the funniest goddamn thing. Everything about that entire intro is fucking hilarious. His, his whole scene with the Prime Minister is amazing. But what truly grabbed my penis and jerked me off was when and Shuya and company are trying to escape for their lives and they are stopped at the exit by him in a rugby outfit. <laughs> and he just gives this absolute nonsensical speech. All, right, all the speeches in this don't make any sense, but at least when he did it, it was funny. Yeah, exactly. It didn't make any sense, but it was funny. I always wanted to play rugby with you guys. It was like, I also loved when he's like riding on the chart chalkboard and mm -hmm. going like uh, if a Guinness stud. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And I still don't like why did his necklace explode? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Because he funded it too. And he counted down to it and then he does this big rugby move just as it's gonna explode. I already brought up him throwing rocks at the Prime Minister's <laughs> screen and plunge it like... <laughs> That was great. I, just, I I really believe that this dude is a prop comic that they pulled up off the street and went, we just want you to do stuff for two hours. He was, I, I did notice that he was on a bunch of Japanese game shows, <laughs> which totally makes sense. Yeah, that's kind of lining up with my image of this guy. Um, Yeah, but he was, he was, he was amazing. He made the movie for me. Like if this guy wasn't in the movie, I'd probably hate it. He brings the entertainment value up a hell of a lot. Yes. More, more than what's-his-face. Kitano. Yeah. Okay, I did... That's the one flashback with Kitano in it. That was... It's funny how, like, from one movie to another, you can just, like, forget what they did and feel... Because I felt, oh, that's so, that's so bad. You're being so mean to your dad. Mm -hmm. And I had to think, Ryan, that guy kills kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Screw that guy. <laughs> he killed so many children. Yeah. But, like, in the moment, I'm like, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> I am just trying to imagine that's your government job to kill kids. <laughs> that's my job, to kill kids. <laughs> Daniel, it's your job to organize these games. I'll kill you all! <laughs> I'll drive you crazy, and I'll kill you all! I'm every nightmare you've ever had! I am your worst dream come true! I'm everything you ever were afraid of! Scary shit, is this movie scary? No. No. Um, they, they managed to make a movie where dozens of children are shot and killed or caught up in explosions and there's even a baby there and it's still not scary yeah it's funny like yeah yeah what do you think of the effects they're not as good as the first one no 
I, I feel like, and it wasn't too bad at first, but like the more it went, it got, it felt lazier. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. I felt like I noticed more CG, like blood splatter. Yeah. But again, it was 2003. So this is like the time where they're just like starting to use that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm sure like back then it was, it was like, oh, that looks so good. Yeah, that's a 10, man. You see that? You see all that blood we can make just by pressing these buttons? Mm -hmm. It's like a whole mist. Yeah. Kiss me, fat boy. <laughs> Kiss me, fat. I was just reading uh, a review. It, some, I think it was somebody from the New York Times who wrote a review of this movie and was comparing it to the original. Uh -huh. And they said something that struck me as really odd. They said that all of the uh, sexual teasing with the school uniforms from the original movie was removed for for this story. And I'm like, I don't feel I don't feel like the the uniforms in the first movie are supposed to be like. Yeah, no, I feel like that's you telling on yourself. Yeah, I, f I don't think they're supposed to be titillating. <laughs> I think they're just school uniforms. Yeah, like, uh, I didn't even think that. Yeah, and you're the biggest... I'm like the resident pervert. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I was, like, school uniforms are a fetish. That's a thing that... Yeah, and I mean, like, if that's your fetish, I guess... But, like, that's, like, on an adult role-playing, and but not, not on children in a movie. Like, I, they were just... They were school kids wearing school uniforms. Like, um, is it Misaka? Mitsuko, the, the, the girl that uses her Mitsuko Soma. Mitsuko, okay. Like, but even she was toned down a shit ton. And, oh, yeah, for the movie? Yeah, yeah. a lot. It, it wasn't like the manga. It wasn't even like the book. Mm -mm. And I'm sitting there. It's a battle royale based off the source material was surprisingly sexless. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, you couldn't do yeah. a, a lot of the stuff in the book or... Obviously not the manga, but yeah. And honestly, I honestly feel like that's just a dude telling on himself. I think it was a woman. I think it's a woman telling on herself. I don't remember. If she's not telling on herself, she's being overly sensitive, and I try not to say that to people too often. I don't even think she was criticizing it. I think it was just more of like an observation. Was was how I interpreted okay. it. Okay, but I don't, whatever. It was yeah, just, that just is a, it's weird to me. Oh my god, are you Stephen King? No, I'm Dean Koontz. Oh. Kings and Koontz. Yeah, my king is the teacher. My king is also him. the teacher. <laughs> yeah. is, the, is absolutely the every, teacher. Every scene he's in elevates this movie to something enjoyable. Uh, I, you know me, I love get, like goofy Japanese cinema, and this mm -hmm. is like that to a T when he's on screen. It was like a Battlefield Baseball character <laughs> put into this movie. Oh god, I want, I want, I want them to, do, I want more Battlefield Baseball. Yeah, maybe we'll get a double feature: Battle Royale three and <laughs> Battlefield Baseball two. Instead of the the Blade Underworld crossover, that's what we get. I think the Blade Underworld crossover would make more money. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, my coons, um, so my real coons is just like every aside from the teacher like every dramatic speech everything that Shuya says it just it's all awful that is my that's my coons but and I don't want to say this was going to be my coons and I tried to do some research and I couldn't really get a definitive answer so it's not my coons but I'm still going to bring it up because I it feels really awkward to me okay so in Shuya's first dramatic speech it shows a lot of footage of impoverished Af Afghan children. Yeah. And I'm think in my head I'm thinking like is this stock footage that you guys just lifted to put in your movie to make it more dramatic? Cuz if so, that's terrible cuz those are real like those are people yeah, with like lives and or or did you actually go to Afghanistan and give these people some money and say, hey, let us take footage of you? Or did you, like, at least get their permission? Um, and I did a little bit of research, and I couldn't find a definitive answer. So I'm not going to assume the worst. But if, the, if they just, like, took stock footage of, like, starving kids in Afghanistan and put it in their movie, well, 
shame on you. That's pretty shitty. Yeah. Real, those are real suffering people uh, that you put in your movie about fake suffering people. You know what kind of even makes it worse is like all, all of like the pictures and stuff they were showing weren't of children suffering. They were of them like being happy, like normal lives. And yeah. they were like talking about them like they lived the worst lives ever. I'm like, mm -hmm. just because they're brown doesn't mean they're bad, Japan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think the, the presumption the, the was that. They have rough lives, but they're happy oh, anyway. Yeah, but yeah. It's, just, it's still but weird to you me. you shouldn't assume just because someone's brown and they live in the Middle East that they have a shitty life. Because everything that I'm seeing on screen, I'm like, it just looks like a normal, like, happy Middle Eastern lifestyle. Yeah, and as I'm watching that, I, of course, have all the current events in the back of my head. And it's just like, oh, this was a bad time to watch this movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ranking... I actually haven't ranked it yet. Uh, mine's gonna be a little low, but not as low as I imagined because that teacher picked it up a few notches. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be kind of middle-ish tier for me, I think. Um, I'll let you go first. I'll just kind of go to the middle-ish here, I'm guessing. Yeah, um... I think I'm gonna rank it... I'm going to put it right under Firestarter Tip. This is your new number 59 above the both the Steel miniseries. I think that it has a similar disappointing sequel, but kind of unintentionally funny. Yeah, I agree. Sort of vibe. Uh, uh, but I like seeing the white man play the Indian character <laughs> a little bit more. I think that's really, really bad. Yep. <laughs> so. they, do, they do it in both the original... <laughs> And in the sequel with two different actors. Yeah. Um, okay, then for me... Um, okay, so there... Yeah, I don't like it more than that. I put Battle Royale right below Firestarter 2. Um, it's better... The Blob, the blob remake is better. Alright, it's my new number 44. Below Evil Dead Rise and above The Boogeyman 2023. Not bad. Um, for just to look, same kind of similar reasons. It's not a good movie, but yeah. it is entertaining. I would, I would have, I would watch again. Uh, Zombie Day. I Taku and Shuya drinking out of that flask really reminded me of the the scene where Shuya and Shogo yeah. drink. I was wondering, is that Shogo's flask? Do you think? I I hope so. Yeah. Um, and then also Shinji's uncle just makes this random appearance. And they call themselves the Wild Sevens. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the cigarette brand. Yeah, yeah that's another one. Uh, there's probably others. All the kids are wearing collars. <laughs> yeah. The paint, the painting comes back. The yeah. aw god awful painting that's hanging in her room. Like I, I kind of want to get a print of that and hang it up. I would not put that in my bedroom. <laughs> that's not what I want to see as I'm falling asleep or waking up. Uh, okay, homework. Uh, you get to be a teacher in the program. You can even change how it works. Uh, how do you torture the classes that formerly made your life hell? Okay, so you know I watch a lot of Saw movies. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take some cues out of that. Uh, the kids are going to be uh, retrofitted with special gloves and socks that every two hours that they do not kill somebody will shatter one of their fingers or toes. Yikes. Um, so, <laughs> mine's going to be a movie marathon. Uh, they have to sit through all 17 Amityville horror movies without going to the bathroom. <laughs> and if they wet their wet themselves, then their necklaces blow up. <laughs> the last one alive wins. But they still have to make it through all 17 without going to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. That's a lot. Yeah. I hate those kids. <laughs> I hate them. I mean, I guess I just talked about how I would torture children. So. Uh, for further reading, uh, I mentioned Battlefield Baseball. I think that's a, if you like that kind of movie, that's another one. Um, you, you mentioned Ichi the Killer. Yeah, just uh, Japanese cinema in general, I yeah. think. Uh, there's way better examples, even if you like, like goofy or acting and stuff. There's... Mm -hmm. Stuff that will let you have the over the top nonsense, but also be like a better movie. The Uzumaki movie is kind of similar. Yeah. Uh, I like this a little more than that movie, but then yeah. again, I like the source material a lot more for Uzumaki. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. So upcoming on the Horror of Babylon on uh, next Sunday is our next novel episode where we are reading Let the Right One In. And I still have failed to look up this Swedish author's name. His name is John. We're just calling him John. John. Uh, and then the next Sunday. So that's Christmas Eve. And then on New Year's Eve, we are doing a double feature episode uh, where we review both the Swedish and American film adaptations uh, from 2008 and 2010, respectively. And then our next two Thursday bonus episodes on Thursday, December 21st, the Blade Athon continues with Blade 2. And then we are taking a break from the Blade Athon on December 28th. And finally, sitting down and doing an episode on the Netflix miniseries Midnight Mass. Hooray! Which. I think logically it would have made sense to do it when we were doing all of our Salem's Lot coverage, but it was just on top of watching <laughs> both miniseries and Chapel Way. It was too much. It was too much, yeah. Um, speaking of somebody who's not too much, thank you to our patrons, Abigail First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and... Logan. The, the Full Metal, metal Patron. patron. And Ben, ben the, the fourth, fourth patron, patron of, of hope. hope. And Mia the fifth, the rainmaker. She makes it rain, yo. And thank you to Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at shop.forhorsemancomics.com. And if you make it in the store, say hello to the proprietor, Ronald the Third, Grampus of Christmas. And also check out Daniel's new YouTube channel where he talks about Superman and DBZ and who could beat who up. Yeah, pretty much. I, uh, I do, I'm i going to be doing some comic reviews and some basic power scaling on it. It's so funny that I mean, like, obviously, not the ten, <laughs> not Superman comics, but like, I'm much more into comics than I am into horror, actually. <laughs> 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 like, somebody, uh, somebody texted me today, their nephew is getting into comics, mm -hmm. and they're like, can you rep recommend a good Spider-Man book for a newbie? And I'm like, yes! Yes, I can do that! I can do that! I know how to do that. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I mean, I'm, we're having fun. Uh, okay. So, thank you for re-watching Battle Royale 2 Requiem. And thank you to our patrons. Stay tuned for our socials, and Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that The Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary. As a pure myth, superstition. I may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the 
scientific reality of today.